Hello everyone and welcome to not one but two really awesome short bullet games uh, from uh, yesterday's match between Daniel Narditsky and Magnus Carlsen. Uh, some of you guys requested me to show a few games and I thought maybe well, since they're bullet uh, I'm just gonna squeeze two of them in one video and they are very short and they're very enjoyable. So usually uh, when you're preparing for a World Chess Championship match, you you know, it's usually done in secrecy, no one knows what you're doing. But here Magnus, even though it's uh, less than a month until the World Chess Championship match, he enjoys a nice bullet match online against um, uh, Daniel Naroditsky here. So let's enjoy it and then we're going to discuss the uh, result uh, of the match uh, afterwards. So uh, this is the first game we're going to show. It features the Owens defense. Uh, let's check it out. So Naroditsky opens with E4 and we have B6 by Magnus. So uh, going for this uh, bishop b7 to, uh, to grab that pawn on e4 right away. Uh, white grabs the center, as this is what you should always do if black allows it. Bishop to b7 and bishop to d3. Now just uh, defending the pawn here. And Magnus goes for e6 here. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I always uh, like to, you know, maybe once a year to show the, the famous Greco miniature in this position, uh, where if black goes immediately with f5, uh, just in case this happens to you, you know that you can capture this pawn. It seems like you can because the g2 pawn is hanging, uh, but if the pawn is captured and black captures on g2, you just play queen h5 check, and that's it. White is better regardless of what black plays. g6 is the only move here, and after f captures, now you have to play something like bishop to g7, but still, white is much, much better here. In the actual game, or rather, the supposed game, knight to f6 was played, um, Greco's opponent went for the queen, and here Greco just captured on h7, opened up a discovery. The only move for black is to capture the queen, and now bishop to g6 ends in a very nice checkmate here. So in case you haven't seen that one, uh, that is the, the famous Greco miniature, but of course, Magnus knows this. He plays e6. Uh, we have knight to c3, d6, and now f4, grabbing even more space in the center as Magnus allows it. Uh, knight to d7, and now uh, knight to f3, preparing to castle. Knight g2 f6, and here uh, Naroditsky just castles. We have bishop to e7, and now you could go for something like queen to e1, going for g3, g7. Uh, this uh, also is a known idea, but here Naroditsky plays e5, and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So uh, Carlsen's knight here is attacked, he moves it to d5, and if this was a normal game, probably we would see something like captures, captures, and c4 attacking the bishop and if the bishop moves back maybe even f5 makes sense uh, but this is a bullet game uh, so Naroditsky goes for queen to e1 now he wants to go uh, queen g3 put pressure here then at some point maybe you can even play f5 the queen will be attacking g7 maybe even bishop to h6 will be an idea so that's what he's going for so knight to b4 Magnus knows that this bishop is an extremely strong piece so of course he threatens it and the queen to g3 now going after the g7 pawn and now if you castle here then you can of run into what we've discussed f5 uh, threatening f6 and for example if d captures on e5 uh, d captures on e5 knight captures on d3 uh, we can simply play bishop to h6 here threatening uh, mate and then black would have um, a tough time getting out of this Sorry about that, had to, really had to get that one. Uh, so here, uh, black would really have a hard time uh, dealing with this. So instead, Magnus just plays g6 right away, and uh, we have f5 uh, nonetheless. So here, f5. And uh, it's a question how, how to react to this. Of course, you have to capture it, but what with? Uh, if uh, g captures, then you allow queen to g7. But even this might be uh, acceptable. Then rook to f8, and black plays this. But in the actual game, Magnus played e captures on f5, and now he allows this bishop to be shifted over to c4, attacking this f7 pawn. And now, uh, again, very, very dangerous uh, stuff here. Uh, the, the c2 pawn is being offered, but if knight captures on c2, then we go for knight to g5, putting pressure uh, on the f7 um, pawn. And if castles here, for example, even rook captures on f5 is an idea. These are all, um, of course, um, uh, ideas that uh, uh, Daniel is well aware of, and uh, he uh, has uh, ha has experience uh, playing, of course, such positions. So it would be very dangerous here. The rook cannot be accepted, and black really has to figure out how to play this. Probably d5, we have to block this diagonal. Uh, but of course, if this is captured, then just this, or even better, knight capture 
captures an f7 check, picks up the queen, it just uh, falls apart. So instead, after bishop c4, Magnus goes for the immediate d5. We want to get rid of that bishop from this diagonal. Bishop to b3, and now c6, just strengthening the position here. Uh, and now you could go for uh, something like bishop to h6 right away to prevent castles, but we have a3 first, attacking the knight, knight a6, and only now uh, bishop to h6. Uh, preventing black from castling, but also it's a very, very nice square for the bishop. Uh, and here, knight to c7. The problem is you could also play queen to c7, maybe try and castle queen side, for example, knight to e2. We want to free up this um, uh, push for, for the pawn. And if a castles queen side, we can just play c4. And already it's white who's on the attack, looks very dangerous. So instead, after bishop to h6, knight to c7. Now Magnus wants to get some control over the e6 square because you know this knight is coming to g5 at some point and that point is now. So knight g5 and now knight to f8. So gaining excellent control over this e6 square. And now how do you continue here? Uh, it's not um, uh, all, all that easy to, to figure out, but uh, you could play something like knight c to e4. It seems like such a crazy move to play because the pawn, the knight can be captured via the d pawn or and via the f pawn. Uh, but again, it's a bullet game. You don't have time to uh, spot everything. And now it's very dangerous. If this uh, is captured, then bishop and knight... Uh, uh, sorry about that arrow attack the f7 pawn and if this is captured then rook and knight attack the f7 pawn and it becomes very very dangerous probably it can be captured but uh, you know uh, in the actual game knight the e2 was played and Nardeski wants to shift the knight to f4 and then control e6 but this allows Magnus to consolidate a little bit bishop to e6 now prevents the knight from moving and you maybe even want to capture this uh, knight because the bishop here wasn't really doing all that much uh, but Naroditsky uh, the the attacking player that he is just offers up the uh, exchange sacrifice so knight f4 and magnus captures it he says all right let's see what you have bishop captures an f1 and now uh the first surprise of the game not rook captures an f1 but actually rook to e1 and this is very very interesting now uh this could uh, uh, either be some sort of a, a remarkable uh, idea that uh, you know uh, if Magnus plays something, then he plays something else, or or it's a mouse slip. But uh, either way, it is very interesting. Uh, for example, if Magnus decides to save his bishop and goes back, bishop to e6, then maybe e6, and then uh, the, the attack uh, really happens. For example, if captures an e6, we're going to capture here, we're going to capture, we're going to capture, and after captures and captures, you get this position where it's, uh, you know, black is, of course, better, he's up a piece, but it's a bullet game. Why, why not play this? You have a very nice... Uh, uh, rook on e6, the queen is very active, uh, the, the bishop fair is still uh, in the game, so maybe this is what he was going for. Another explanation is that maybe it's just a mouse slip. But okay, either way, rook to e1, and Magnus uh, doesn't care about his bishop, he just consolidates and plays knight uh, f to e6 right away. Uh, he want, he does not want to allow this uh, pawn to e6 push. Uh, and now we have knight g captures on e6, knight captures on e6, and only now rook captures on f1, as there really is nothing better. Uh, so here Magnus grabs the d4 pawn, knight captures on d4, but this also means that he allows this push uh, pawn to e6. So here we have queen to d6, not caring about this capture, e captures on f7 with check, king captures on f7, and now he doesn't want to uh, part with his light square bishop here, it's a very, very, very nice piece, the bishop pair is doing good work here, so he puts it to a2, uh, but this also means that it's, uh, well, just very easy for Magnus to end the game on the spot, uh, so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Magnus uh, in the coolest way possible while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding any of the uh, winning ideas because most of them are, you are just, uh, you know, up material. So in, any move here really would uh, allow you to, to, to still be winning the game. But the move that we're looking for and that most of you guys found, if not all of you, is queen captures on f4. Uh, this is what um, uh, Magnus played. And it was in this position on move 24 that Daniel Narodetsky resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. He's now down simply two. Too much material and the queen cannot be accepted if the queen is accepted then comes knight to e2 check with this beautiful fork here 
for king the king the queen but also the bishop uh, and now after the king moves we can just capture and after king captures the attack is over uh, black is just uh, up too much material uh, as you can see he's up two pawns and also up the exchange so there's no point in in playing this so this is the first game and the second one it's uh, a bit more complicated but also also very enjoyable so again Naroditsky with white Magnus with black uh, we have e4 uh, e5 by Magnus knight to c3 d6 and now f4 so the Vienna game the Omaha gambit is on the board uh, now usually you want to capture on f4 here but Magnus first goes for knight to f6 it's a very very annoying variation uh, that you really have to know if, if you play this with white knight to f3 e captures on f4 so now he accepts it of course white plays d4 he wants to recollect his pawn and now knight to h5 uh, similar ideas are also seen in the king's gambit where black tries to um uh, the, the defend his uh, gambited pawn but usually it doesn't work all that well so let's see how it works here so bishop to c4 uh, white uh, usually doesn't care about the pawn he wants to get some rapid development in bishop to e7 we have castles magnus castles and now uh, there is a game uh, where knight to g5 uh, was played and it's possible because the knight on h5 is undefended but here uh, we have e5 and it is now uh, as of move 8 that we have a completely new game uh, so let's see how Magnus deals with this. He plays knight to c6, uh, puts some pressure on the pawn here, e captures on d6, and now one would expect bishop captures or queen captures, but no, Magnus captures with the c pawn uh, for some reason, probably taking away the e5 square from uh, from the knight here, not allowing any, any such ideas, uh, but also it's, it, it's just very weird. So here, knight to d5, Naroditsky wants to eliminate this strong bishop here, uh, bishop to e6 and now knight captures on e7 and you can capture with the queen if you capture with the queen d5 and the black's in big trouble so after knight captures on e7 we have knight captures by magnus and now uh, we have bishop uh, uh, back to d3 uh, also possible here and uh, quite better is just captures on e6 and after f captures knight g5 attacking the the knight here and also the e6 pawn but i have to remind everyone this is bullet so of course everything can be seen even here black has the annoying rook to f5 uh kind of saying that okay capture my knight and if the knight is captured h6 here uh, now the knight can't move because the queen hangs uh, but still it's uh, very much playable bishop captures h captures we're gonna play bishop captures and white of course retains a, a better position here but okay uh bishop back to d3 was played and now we have knight to g6 so now all of a sudden magnus doesn't have one knight guarding the df4 pawn but actually two knights so c3 uh adding more defense to this d4 pawn here and now rook to e8 so here white really has to figure out how to get this uh dark square bishop into the game so bishop to d2 we have to start somewhere and now bishop to g4 just pinning the knight of course you never have to worry about h3 because uh, the uh, white king's position is already too too much open queen to c2 now the knight can't move because uh, bishop can capture on h7 uh, and now queen to d7 connecting the rooks and now the other rook can come into the game as well we have rook a to e1 and magnus very happily trades uh, the rooks rook captures rook captures and rook to e8 he wants to trade another pair of rooks so now this he prevents this he plays bishop to e4 uh, but magnus says nope uh move that bishop we are we are definitely trading rooks here so bishop back to d3 and now why not uh bishop captures on f3 we open up the white king's position rook captures on e8 with check first queen captures and g captures on f3 so now uh this is the position uh queen and two bishops against queen and two knights and magnus still has this annoying pawn here uh that he uh well uh managed to, to save uh fr from the beginning and it seems like here you could actually remove uh, uh the defender but it's uh, first black to move so here black goes knight to h4 he offers the pawn here uh for the f3 pawn so now Litsky defends it and now g5 and now you're not capturing this pawn so it's a really a remarkable story of how this pawn survived for for such a long time which also means if we manage to trade down all of our pieces we're just in a king and pawn end game where black is up a pawn also something that you have to consider at all times when you play your own games so queen to b3 putting pressure on the b7 pawn but this just allows magnus a really really powerful move and that is queen to c6 attacking and defending at the same time and uh, how do you defend this well bishop to e2 but now now comes the moment of uh, well uh, just reality feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for magnus here while, while i give you a couple of seconds 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on finding this, uh, well, uh, sacrifice that cannot be ignored. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course knight to g4 check. And now the knight has to be captured. If if uh, you just move the king, then we capture on f3 for free. Uh, but uh, re regardless of what you do, you know, you're not going to have a great time. So here f captures on g4 was played. Now comes queen to g2 with check, king to e1. Queen to g1 with check, only move is bishop to f1, and now knight to f3 with check. Uh, also, uh, also playable was just knight to g2 check and allow this uh, uh, f3 square to be made available for the for the pawn when needed. Because if king e2, just f3 check, and that's uh, really all, all there is to it. Uh, queen captures here. And now after, if the king goes up the board, we're going to checkmate the king very easily. So we're going to have to play something like king to g3. But then knight h4, threatening queen f3 checkmate. And there really isn't a good way to stop this. Uh, you have to play queen d5 or queen capture some b7 to guard this. But now just um, a very simple queen d3 check wins the bishop here. And that's it. We're up a piece. We're completely winning. There's nothing white can do about this. So this was possible, but Magnus goes for... Uh, uh, more of a finesse move. Uh, he plays knight to f3 with check, king to e2, and now, of course, queen captures an f1 with check. Uh, we've reached the position from the thumbnail. Uh, hopefully, uh, king captures an f1, and now knight captures an d2 with a royal fork. This will uh, win back the queen. So, queen e2, knight captures, pawn captures, and now we get the position that we discussed. If we remove all the pieces from the board, it's going to be a king and pawn in game where black is just up a pawn. So, king g7, king King to f3, now comes king to g6, king e4, uh, white uh, getting uh, a, a lot of uh, space in with the king here, but Magnus just pushes it back with the d5 check. And the pawn, of course, cannot be captured. If it's captured, then the white king can no longer reach uh, this pawn. The pawn is becoming a queen. So after d5 check, you have to go back, king f3, but now just f5. Now. Uh, as it is with uh, king and pawn endgames, uh, the more you trade down, the more winning you will be. So h3, we have b5 now, uh, preventing any c4 ideas, uh, and b4 now, stopping a5, but it doesn't really matter. Here Magnus played h5, and he was in this position on move 36 that uh, Daniel Naroditsky resigned the game, and uh, a very nice victory for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, for those of you who really enjoyed when I finished the games here, there's really not all that much for white to do. White can play like b3, and then we just trade captures, 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 and after we play a king move, uh, that's it. If you go to h5, the f pawn is too fast, uh, you, you're not going to be able to stop it. And if f3, you of course uh, allow the uh, black king to, to reach the f5 square, and I have king f2, g4, and that's it. King g2, whatever, king e4, and now these pawns are just controlling everything here. You're just going to pick up all the pawns and just win the game easily. So yeah, after h5, uh, uh, Nordisk resigned and an another very nice victory for Magnus Carlsen. So in terms of the match, they played like 50 games, 49 games to be exact, and the end result is 31 and a half for Magnus and 16 and a half for, for Narodisky. Uh, they both started around uh, 3100 bullet rating, uh, I think, uh, and then uh, near the end, I think Magnus was like uh, maybe... One 3150 and now this was maybe on 30 or, or maybe 3090 something like that uh, if you guys want to check out all the games uh, you can just you know go on leeches and click on them uh, or i've seen um uh, john bartholomew streamed uh, the entire tournament or the entire match so you can check it out i will put a link to it in the description below first thing you will see so you can check out all the games if you guys are into that uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys, uh, uh, those were the games. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Uh, I would like to thank Jean-Francois Bond, uh, Matthias um, uh, Bollinger, uh, Oliver Nius, uh, the Hoodie Guy, and the Ween Machine for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continue to check up on your wonderful suggestions, such as this one, and checking up on uh, everything else that's happening in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.